So this is an interesting patient. This patient comes on with NSTEMI, myocardial infarction, long history of renal failure. And so they did a CTA, which is a three-phase CTA. Um, perhaps I would have maybe chosen another study to evaluate this patient. They're worried about PE, so they, they figure that they can maybe get a shot, I imagine, at the pulmonary arteries as well as maybe looking at the coronaries to figure out what's going on. But I'm going to ask you to not look at the coronaries. The study actually was not optimized for coronary artery evaluation. It was really optimized more for aortic and pulmonary artery evaluation, as you can see by the enhancement. But as we're scrolling through, we see this interesting oval and rounded opacity, which looks pretty oblong. It actually has like multiple lobes to it, as you can see. This is clearly abnormal, I'm gonna mag in on it. And there's areas of eccentric calcification as well. There's a small focus here of more hyperdensity along the mitral annulus, and a little bit of this low density material, again, along the inferior margin of the mitral annulus with some calcification. So definitely abnormal, this is, looks really abnormal. I would have wondered if there was a pseudo aneurysm here. I wonder if maybe there's a connection in here. There's also very hyperdense calcification near the inferior margin of the aortic valve. This is not; these are not standard planes that we evaluate the heart in, but on the axial plane, I think that you can still make out a lot, and sometimes you have to be descriptive based on that pattern. So here's a mitral valve here. Here's a non-coronary cusp back here. And along the inferior margin that just right in there, we see the origination of this chunky area of calcium. Maybe even abutting the mitral annulus near the left ventricular outflow tract. Remember the mitral valve and the aortic valve are actually in fibrous continuity. Interestingly, as we scroll A little bit more superiorly, we see this other focus of hyperdensity, a little bit different from the blood pool. So this chunk area of calcium as well. This looks like it's associated with the right coronary cusp, but probably also the left coronary cusp as well. So obviously here's the right coronary artery. There's some motion artifact here, even though this is a ECG gated study. So this is obviously the right coronary cusp, and then we see the left coronary artery coming off of here. This is obviously the left coronary cusp. These chunky areas of calcium. But I would wonder if maybe there's a pseudoaneurysm here, or some, some, some sort of weird pseudoaneurysm, though uh, kind of a weird spot to have it. It's near the intervalvular fibrosa, but usually that's going to be more up in here, um, the intervalvular fibrosa, which is relatively um, low vascular area. And so there's a tendency to get pseudoaneurysm in that area. Uh, but usually after a patient's had some sort of intervention, it'd be weird for a heart without any sort of surgical history to develop a pseudoaneurysm in that area. Though obviously you can get um, endocarditis and it can occur anywhere in the heart. And obviously one of the complications that could be localized weakening of the heart wall and development of a pseudoaneurysm. So, um, so this is concerning though. So what do we do? Well, you know, thankfully The CTAs, we often will also include a non-contrast phase. And so this was done before we injected contrast. And we see that this area by the mitriannulus is actually inherently hyperdense. So it's actually not feeling with contrast, it's just inherently hyperdense. And so now this is more or less diagnostic of a single diagnosis, cases necrosis of the mitral valve. And this is a subtype of mitral annular calcification. One of the hints on the arterial phase was the fact that there were areas of calcification and more focal calcification, for example, down in here, more chunky calcium. And so that probably was a indicator or at least a hint that this all was somehow related to that. This was a subtype of mitral annual calcification. And based on the non-contrast study, this is classic for that. Uh, what do we do with this though? So I have never really talked about or heard about aortic annular calcification or caseous necrosis 
Casey's necrosis of the aortic valve. I think that would be weird. But I think that given its close proximity to the mitral valve and the, the pathology within the mitral valve, and based on CT density having very similar morphological characteristics, I think that's what this is. I think this is caseous necrosis of the aortic valve. I think that's probably very uncommon, but I don't know what else it could be. And this may be, again, another focus of that along the non-coronary cusp as we demonstrate on the arterial phase of study. If you have any other thoughts on what this might be, go ahead and post some comments. I'd be really interested to see what the imaging and cardiology community thought of this case.